Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. I'm really excited because we're back in person doing podcasts again. It's been a while. Um, not that we still won't do some remote ones, but it's nice to be face to face with somebody. This is one of our facilitators that, uh, with the Liberate family that does amazing healing work through devotional chanting. So meet Gopala and welcome. I'm excited to have you here and to help you teach others and know a little bit more about what chants are, which are mantras and this beautiful instrument and everything you do. So first off, since I think this is the, the, the glaring thing in the room, you know, most people might not have ever seen an instrument like this. Mm. So let, let, let's, let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that and, mm -hmm. and see where we go here. All right. Well, namaste. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a joy. And a blessing and a pleasure um, to share this very, very sacred time together. Um, yeah, so devotional chanting, as you were saying, uh, so it's a very powerful meditative practice, right? And so I l learned this from my guru, uh, okay. Paramahansa Yogananda. Okay. So Yogananda, as some of you may know, he is considered the father of yoga in the, in the West. Yes. So he came in the early uh, 20th century to um, uh, his most important uh, mission was to spread the ancient science of Kriya Yoga okay. which he, he said that it's the most powerful um, scientific technique for self-realization okay okay and so, what is Kriya Yoga for those that don't know so Kriya Yoga is a very powerful pranayam technique so a technique to interiorize the life force so that we can switch off the senses because we we're usually uh, identified with the senses right and with the body mm -hmm. so what kriya yoga does it reverses uh, um, so yogananda uses this an, um, analogy it says that kriya yoga reverses the searchlight of the senses mm. so we turn off the senses through pranayam okay. right and we interiorize the life force on the spine Okay. So that's what Kriya Yoga does. And then that way um, we first relax the body, then control the mind, and then we are in tune with spirit, mm -hmm. right? So, so then, so that this was his mission, basically. Yeah. His most important mission, that was his guru, Swami Sri Yukteswar, who gave him, gave him the training for years in India, sent Yogananda to the West to impart this sacred science, yeah. And now we, so many of us get a benefit from it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And talk about a time more important than now to start benefiting, right? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know, the world seems to get crazier and crazier by the day. <laughs> not even, not even by the week or the year, it's like by the day, yeah. it's like something else is going on and everybody's stressed out and we're isolated and we're so caught out of alignment to, right. to be able to have techniques to pull you back into alignment and to connect with your true self your spirit is so important and i think that at this time there's a lot of people that are losing faith or hope right you know but when you grab into a connection with spirit you trust that all is okay right and so yes. you know i can't express more how it's the perfect time that if you're listening and this is you know you're just wondering about other ways to heal or other processes you can do and things like that to you know spread this share this you know because this is a beautiful technique you know so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so you yeah. got into this what so, caused you to get into this well i was always seeking okay right and so, so, so you were, you were i was seeking. like a it truth seeker it, yeah it wasn't like just like a catalyst something happened in life and you're like trying to heal yourself and then you ended up finding that or you were you just were drawn into i was more just like uh, uh seeking truth okay right seeking truth and actually i've heard from a lot of friends from my temple and like yogis and stuff that they said that la in particular los angeles is a city of like very uh, prone to have this kind of like truth seekers mm -hmm. who come from like different places right yeah. and they just they're just seeking for truth 
right? So there is something here, there is a very a special vibration that happens with that. And so, you know, I, I consider myself one of those because yeah. I was just just seeking truth, right? And uh, I was just trying to, trying to find something that resonated with me. Okay. So, you know, I read a few, you know, like, like spiritual books. I was really getting into like Eastern spirituality, especially. That, that's what really was drawing me. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, and so, so when I found out about Yogananda and the Hollywood Temple, that's the, the one that I started going to, the Hollywood mm. Temple of Self-Realization, mm -hmm. then that just really resonated for me because he spoke about the oneness of religion, mm, the yeah. oneness of truth. And I was always like within me, I was always like, there has to be like one truth. Like if true, if there is truth, it has to be one. Yeah. Right? So then that really resonated with me. Yeah. yeah. And bringing all the components of all different belief systems and seeing how they overlap and how a lot of the teachings are one of the same, just using different mm -hmm. language or descriptions or metaphors or stories yeah. or names of deities or angels or whatnot and then you find mm -hmm. that they kind of those vibrations overlap and yeah. and it's not about this dogma or that it's about an understanding of okay we all use words to describe and we use what is known within our context so of course a story from you know the middle east is going to be different than a story from I don't know, South America are going to be different than a story from somewhere else, but it's exactly. like when they all overlap, you see this synergy. Yes, right. yes, perfect. Yeah, synergy. That's exactly the word. Yeah. yeah. And specifically chanting, mm -hmm. you know, so like, so now you're, you're going into seeking truth. You walk into the Hollywood Self-Realization Fellowship, and it's important to a note to people that aren't from Los Angeles, uh, uh, that's uh, w one of the temples here. There's actually a few of them. There's the Lake Shrine one that's in Malibu, and then there's the one in... Um, yeah, Glendale. There's in Mount one in Will and, and then Mount Washington. Yeah, yeah Mount Washington. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's a few of these um, temples, and I think like the Mount Washington one was the first, right? Yeah, that's the headquarters, or, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the headquarters, and, exactly. And so... You go in, you start seeing this, you start hearing, you know, because it's it's kind of structured a little bit like church, right? You mm -hmm. know, and then, mm -hmm. but then a lot of it's meditation at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. I've been many times too, but mm -hmm. so uh, you're there and then you're pulled in. And then where did you like say, okay, I, I want to start studying, I want to start learning. And when were you first introduced to chanting? And so. Yeah, yeah, so it was with the kirtan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so the for the meditations, uh, we usually have uh, what is called kirtan, right? Mm -hmm. So kirtan is another practice that Yogananda brought. Like so, he brought um, devotional chanting, mm -hmm. right, uh, as a means to interiorize the mind as well. Okay. So we usually use devotional chanting um, before going into our meditation periods. Mm. And because devotional chanting, it's, um, it's also a, a very powerful East, Eastern practice, right? That's been going on for centuries, right? The, the yogis and the rishis from ancient India um, have been practicing that for, for, for ages now. And so it's, it's a technique in itself too. It's a meditative te technique in itself. So what devotional chanting does it prepares the mind to go into the interiorized states of mm -hmm. the meditation. So when I heard this at the temple with the kirtan and everything, I was like, whoa, because I love music, right? I've yeah. been playing music for for a long time. And so when I heard this, I never heard this specific type of music that had this power to just interiorize your mind, you know, interiorize, like calm your senses, calm your body so that you would then feel ready to go into deep states of meditation. So it's almost like it's, it, it pulls you into, you know, like a lot of us, we're thinking about a million things. Mm -hmm, we're thinking mm -hmm. about what we have to do later, what we had to do, what, what just happened, our to-do list, everything else, the stressors, some things that might have, you know, went on, conversations that we mm -hmm. have to have, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, do, 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 do. And then we're walking around and on an energetic level, we're picking up a, a whole bunch of 
our crap, but also a whole bunch of other people's crap, right? right? Especially <laughs> in the collective right now. Who walk down the street and see how you feel, you know? Like so Yeah. So, you know, that all that congestion, if you look or it, it like creates this dirty energy field, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really hard mm-hmm. having a dirty energy field to find stillness or a lot of thoughts to find stillness. Right. So yeah. what you're saying is that this is a practice that helps clear and purify that mm-hmm. so that you can just drop down into. Yes, exactly. And s- some people would view it as a meditation just in itself and a mm-hmm. healing just in itself mm-hmm. though too because it can, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, I can, yeah, exactly. I've, I've zoned out to some chants and stuff before where I've just, you know, before it, I even le- get into like the stillness or the quietness, it's like I'm there with just a chant. Yeah, you know? exactly. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, kirtan, we find it in different lineages too, right? In like you know, different uh, specific lineages from different gurus, right? Mm-hmm. So within within SRF or Yogananda, mm-hmm. he uses devotional chanting as this powerful means for calming the mind so it's kind of like a preliminary for to go into deep meditation so well, that's what, what it about does. if we could calm everybody's mind that's watching right now and do like yeah. a little like experience yes, you know yes how you guys feeling are you you know wanting to have a little <laughs> bit of calm in the mind and see what the effect is what's that so yeah. what would you what would you tell somebody do they do they sit up do they close their eyes yeah what, yeah so, what, what so it's very important posture first right so as we know meditation uh, the basic thing is to have a straight spine, mm-hmm. okay? So it doesn't matter, we're, right now we're um, stand, standing cross-legged, I guess we're kind of, we like the yogic style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and, and I have the pig on me. <laughs> <laughs> you can meditate too. Uh, but you can also just sit on a straight uh, armless chair, it doesn't matter. So the most important thing uh, um, is to have a straight spine, right? Okay. So we have a straight spine, and then we, you know, we position. Usually, we can position the the palms like like this on the on the legs, and then also very important is the gaze. The gaze of the eyes should be at the third eye, right? Some of you may know the third eye is the the spiritual eye. So with your eyelids closed, though. With, with uh, it can be eyelids closed or half closed. Okay. Usually, if it's your first time, it's a little bit easier if your eyes are fully closed. closed. Yeah. And then, as one practices more, usually the 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 eyes just tend to half open naturally. Mm-hmm. The important thing is to be relaxed, this center, and not to strain. Right. Okay. So then we do that. Right. And so then we are in the meditation posture. Right. And then so when we chant. We want to chant from the center, the spiritual eye, and from the heart. Okay. Right? Because these are actually, these, uh, these two centers are interrelated. So the heart is the, the, the center of feeling or, or, or devotion. And then this is the center of concentration or the, from the superconscious realm. This extends and expands into spirit, right? Okay. So, so then, uh, yeah, we can just get on the meditation posture like this okay all right and then I'll um, chant uh, it's an invocation to Brahma which is called uh, Brahmanandam and so Brahmanandam we usually chant this uh, it's a very very common chant that we do in the meditations uh, and it's it's a hymn to Brahma so Brahma is considered the creator he's he comes from the from the Trinity Brahma Vishnu and Shiva Mm-hmm. So this is kind of like an invocation to Brahma, and so there is a Sanskrit verse, the Sanskrit verse, and then and then Yogananda's um, um, translation. Okay. Right. So we can we can do this one. So on your meditation posture, just just try to chant with your heart. Brahma. Yeah. 
that we've chanted, we've interiorized the mind, and so now is the time to enter into a deep state of meditation. So we keep the gaze at the spiritual eye, and we can just, you know, concentrate on the breath, and just breathe really slowly, and just enjoy the stillness of meditation. I feel like we could stay there for a while, <laughs> but I know there's a little bit more information to kind of cover right, and right, go into. Right. That's great. I mean, talk about centering. I hope everybody felt that of just clearing away everything else and dropping you in. Such a powerful mm -hmm. way to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just one song. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you teach or lead classes or at least do some meditations with us, right? Mm -hmm. And you do in person, you've been a part of a kirtan group in mm -hmm. the past. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about what coming to some of your in-person or remote sessions are like and what people get out of it and what mm -hmm. are some of the benefits of this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yes, uh, so basically it's, you know, you got a, a gist of it right now, it's about just diving deep into the vibrations mm -hmm. of the of the chants, right? So, if we just try to immerse ourselves in this, you know, divine vibration that com that comes from these repetitions of the chants, then that prepares us to really experience the in these interiorized states of deep meditation, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very experiential, mm -hmm. and very it's like a spiritually immersive. Yeah. Um, so would you normally do like a few songs and like a space in between after each one exactly, to drop in? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, you know, I first talked uh, briefly about um, devotional chanting and what, you know, Yogananda kind of explains about the, the nature of devotional chanting. And then we go into, um, into chanting together, right? Wow. So then that way everyone can experience the 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 vibrations the sacred vibrations of the chants and then after that we 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 uh, have periods of silence in between okay right so, so it'll be like a chant and then followed by silence and a followed chant by also. silence silent meditation and then and then chants and i'm guessing like each time reminds me of like hypnosis where if you br bring somebody back up and put them back down it's called fractionation and they go deeper every time so it's kind of like you're walking down a mm -hmm. stair so did people find that by the end of it that they're in like a very deep space because like pulling yeah. up and then back down and that yeah. right yes yes that's what it is that's what it and is what are some of the benefits for this i mean i know that it's super healing but what have you found that people get so so let me read a quote from yogananda about okay. what he says about devotional chanting so you get an idea this was perfect question um so in his uh book cosmic chants that he wrote where well, this is where where you know we learn a lot of the different chants that he wrote right uh and so in the prelude he says that sound is the most powerful force in the universe he says, sound or vibration is the most powerful force in the universe. Music is a divine art 
to be used not only for pleasure but as a path to God realization. Vibrations resulting from devotional singing lead to attunement with the cosmic vibration or the word. Mm -hmm. Right? And then he even quotes a passage from the Bible that says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm. So then, here, um, you know, Yogananda is telling us that it's this cosmic vibration that we want to tap into, right? Yeah. So it's the own, the own vibration um, that pervades the whole universe, right? And Guruji says that that was the, the creative um, force that spirit used to project the universe to to bring the universe into manifestation he had to use this powerful force this powerful energy right mm -hmm. which is energy because we're energetic beings right everything's energy yeah so then this own vibration is the primordial uh, sound the primordial primordial energy so then with each chance with the, the devotional chanting we are using this primordial own vibration to put us back into harmony. To put us back into harmony, exactly. Centering ourselves, grounding ourselves, and yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I, you know, like, for those that haven't really fully experienced this or dived in, I mean, I'm sure at certain times that you listen to different songs on the radio and things like that, and you're brought into different states, different energies, different emotions, different vibrations. And so, you know, it is super powerful. And on, even mm -hmm. on the scientific level, there's these really cool things you probably Google on YouTube. Google on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube search. <laughs> but it, it, where sands laid out mm -hmm. and different... Um, different music is played and the sand will actually start to form into almost like snowflake sacred geometry type of that, like yes and and it's yes. it and it's the vibration actually causes the sand to part but it, it it parts in these in these ways but that's like what it's doing to our body if we're molecules if like our cells are like molecules of sand right you know like or the vibration you know we're having this different effect so yeah i think that it, it's it's really uh worthwhile to check out some of those videos to see if that can mm -hmm, happen mm -hmm. to physical substances what mm -hmm. is it happening also to all of our atoms and protons neutrons electrons yes, all that yes, stuff you yes, know yes, yes. that are yes. floating around us <laughs> yeah 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 i love i love this analogy it was perfect yeah 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 it's that goes to show exactly what, what you're saying is is right yeah yeah so, so with um with chanting how often such, 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 should somebody do it and you know like what what is like a, a normal practice is something somebody should do like every day to unwind from work in the morning to start the day all of the above like what what do you recommend for people that are starting so out? so the way we do it the uh -huh. way uh, yogananda uh, teaches is he uh, it, it can be part of one's spiritual practice okay you no know, or your sadhana so um, it's a very important part of your uh, of your of the spiritual practice so we usually use it before as a preliminary for meditation right yeah so then uh, yeah it can be done like you know um, if you meditate morning and evening you can use it at both times you know gotcha. in, the, in the morning in the evening uh, and, and it's like like you know you really have to do it to experience it yourself you know it really can bring such a deep sense of peace and joy you know if you've had like what you were saying if you've had a long day at work you know if you've had like you know stress or tension and stuff like that which um you know can happen sometimes yeah or, uh, or <laughs> most times <laughs> most times so then you know we just okay we, we're back home we you know we want to relax we want to feel the the peace of meditation then we just we just do it yeah okay. we just practice it and what about when they can practice and do it with you yeah yeah but when when are you available where what how can people find you you know oh all that okay stuff? yeah 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 so well the live streams right now that that we're having are on the second and fourth Thursday and we're working okay. on getting them live here too so mm -hmm. that 
Hopefully by next month that will be live as well. So whenever you're watching this, just check our calendar because you might watch yes. it after that. It's already passed, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. And, and what about, do you have any like social handles that they can follow you or other, because I mean, you might do things at other places and stuff too, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, f uh, you can follow me on Gopala Bhakta. Gopala okay. Bhakta on Instagram. And, and we'll put that down below too. Facebook and, uh, you know, my website. Um, I, I have some videos actually there from like the promo yeah that we've been we've been doing here and uh yeah i mean if you are into healing into really you know trying to ground yourself um you know with a uh, meditation practices this you know if you feel that this resonates with you uh definitely i'd say give it a try you know give it a try and yeah you know yeah it's worth it it's worth it yes do you think that you could you know first off is there anything else that you want to share before we close off um well just um what kind of touching on what you were saying earlier i mean we're right now we're living in times where we really have to try to change ourselves mm -hmm. right because that comes first and foremost so you know collectively everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. right and so you know if we want to start seeing changes in the world we have to change ourselves first yeah right and that's who we have control over that right? exactly exactly so the more we just like you know try to change ourselves and like you know try to ground ourselves and like you know be more in touch with the soul the more we'll have a positive influence in the world right yeah. and so uh yeah that's that's um that's very important amazing <laughs> Can we do one more? Yes, yes, and yes. Then, and then, you know, what we'll do is maybe we'll end with that. Um, you know, so make sure you 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 like, uh, comment, and share this with others. But uh, to allow you to have and kind of just float off into that meditative space, as long as you don't have anything else to do right after this, mm -hmm. uh, we can end on that and then we'll take you into the meditation. And we'll cut off, but you can uh, continue to float away. All right. Sounds good. All right. So this one is uh, Spirit and Nature. Okay. Uh, and so this is very nice because, uh, so Krishna and Radha, and, and it's nice because um, Krishna's uh, birthday is coming up on Janmashtami. So Krishna is uh, symbolized in the, the ancient Hindu scriptures as a great avatar. Mm -hmm. right and so krishna and radha are usually depicted as like being always in love right mm -hmm. so krishna has his concert radha but the symbology is the the oneness between spirit and nature right mm -hmm. or, or 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 the the supreme spirit and the soul right mm -hmm. so then with this chant we try to uh just feel feel our connection with spirit and just this oneness with with uh, the soul and the universe okay right and to think about the metaphor of that famous movie avatar oh yeah and it's a reason they were blue and it's yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's great wow all okay, right all right here we go
enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically, Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're gonna see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is Liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.